All right, in this video, I'll be showing you how to test a Eaton Fuller Road Ranger valve. And this just happens to be the, uh, this particular video, I'm just gonna be showing the high low range shifter. So this is the old model, and then there's the newer models, have a button on the valve, like on the uh, round part of the valve, it's valve itself like that however the uh, procedure is still the same the, the idea is still the same and these things as you can see they're very simple you have an outlet which is this one here the one facing away from the shift knot from the uh, shift tower or this this shaft here shift stick Kind of truck around there and this outlet and consequently since there are only two holes this is the outlet the other one must be the inlet and then right in between there there's a little hole that there and I'm not a hundred percent sure yet because I haven't tested it but that should be the exhaust so basically that empties out all the air that's in the, the lines you zoom in will you there we go and for the I could theoretically just connect the inlet straight to the air compressor but I'm at 130 psi in the air compressor so and you're really only supposed to have 60 psi on these things so for the sakes of the demonstration I also added the regulator and I have a separate video if you want to see how to test that uh, but really it's also very simple big hole is the inlet You get 110 130 psi in And there's the in there And you get lower pressure 60 to 50 psi out now why they reduce the pressure is a debate for another video so anyways in there out goes into the out from the regulator it goes into the um, line there now this is not actually how it goes in the truck because you have the slave valve but I'm just using this for the purpose of demonstration because you will have 60 psi going into here but it will be from the slave valve. So originally it would have been from one of these flimsy, shitty little 1 8 lines, which I will replace with something like this quarter inch, or at least something maybe 1 8 but in, in rubber, not in these flimsy little plastic nylon ni lines here. Very easy to get plugged up. Remember, the, the transmission controls are going through this here. So do I really want to trust my transmission, my truck, on this shitty little line? I don't think so. But anyways, um, so we're ready for the test. We got the airlines hooked up. And let's turn the pressure on. Right now, the valve is down. So that's up. That's down. And on the valve itself, it says Try to zoom in. It says up high and down for low. So this is really important because this is also going to tell me in which position the piston should go in. So since this is just an in and an out, there's either going to be air in or there's going to be no air. Uh, some other valves you could have air in one exit, you could have two outlets. Um, you have pressure in one and then nothing to the other. Or you could have not, uh, pressure in the other and nothing to this one. 
But in this case, we just have on and off. So air, air is either on or off. And this is going to tell us which position the piston should be in because if down has air pressure, then that means air must be applied to get to low. But on the other hand, so air must be pushed, the piston must be pushed in, applied for the piston to move, and then first to go to the low range. On the other hand, this is a, terminology is a little bit confusing for me at least, but on the other hand, if this is on low right now, it's on down position, down low. If on the other hand, no air is present, then that means air must be applied to get it to high range instead. So our normal switch off position, the piston is going to be in low range. Now, I believe from what I read on the manual that you have to apply air to get it to high range. So if no air is applied, then the transmission is in low range. Um, in other words, if the, sh if the switch is closed, then it's in low range. You have to open the valve for it to be in high range. But our, uh, we'll test and find out. Oops, I forgot to uh, plug one of the uh, outputs there. Hang on. My bad, I had the, uh, I had one of the outputs, that output there. Uh, okay. Right, so moment of truth. So with the valve on closed position, it's actually open. Hmm. So it's the opposite. At least in this case, and I think this varies between from transmission to transmission. In this case, the air has to be applied for the low range. So down, it's actually, now if I shift it to high, we should lose air and should be exhausted there. And sure enough, there it is. So air is just exhausted through there. So, and this is very important guys, because if, if I was, were to just close a valve, if I were to just have a valve that opens and closes, kind of like, like this here, or like that, just open or closed and open, o open, closed. If I were to have a valve like that, if I just close the valve, there's still air in the pipe. So I have to empty that air out, and that's why you have the exhaust here. So these things are a little bit more complex. A little bit of a leak there. I just hand tighten these things. But So in this case, high, we have no air. Push it down for low. There's our air pressure. Up high, down for low. And I will say that with this kind of gauge, sorry, with this uh, kind of valve, I don't think you can swap these around so that it's the opposite. I don't think you can have air going in through here. And you, you can't flip this around. But if I get one of these things, just a three-way valve, it's doing exactly the same thing as this is doing, but in cast iron and without any O-rings. So I could definitely replace one of these things, one of these high-low range valves, with a hydraulic through-way valve like one of these. This would definitely definitely be a lot more reliable than than this here. A little bit big, but it's not not too too much of a difference. You have to set it up like that. So I might actually do that. So 
so I hope this helps um, people out there um, I'm not sure if we have a part number for this but I think there's only one of them I think there's just one of these kinds of valves so I don't think in, in other words I don't think there's one where it's uh, high pressurized or high on But this explains my shift problem. You see, if you run out of air in the transmission, on the gauge or the slave valve or somewhere along there, then it will automatically shift into high range. And that's pretty bad because, like I said before, you can drive in low range. It'll take you a long time to where you want to go. But if you want to be stuck, if you have to choose between which range you want to be stuck in, you definitely want to be stuck, rather be stuck in low range because it's very it's almost impossible to get the truck moving it's a big problem getting the truck moved if it's stuck in high range but in low range it's not a problem